from the west. It's morning, obviously, there. Um, and afternoon there in the east, correct? Yes. Yeah, we got it all. You're morning, I'm afternoon. Yes, we're good. Yeah, we, we got that unlocked. I do okay. want to say this. Um, I, it's, it's interesting. I know we're going to start with this uh, Leangelo Ball story. Uh, it's very disappointing what happened. But I wonder, David, do we ever forget about Grace anymore? I mean, he is a kid. Yeah, it's it's really not about grace though. It's about Chinese law right now, Carrie, and that's that's the yeah. real concern for for not just Lanzo Ball. I understand Ball. that, but I still feel like, oh, my bad, David. You go ahead. I'm sorry. You okay. said we got to get to work. Uh, you go ahead. I we want to get the very latest on this yeah. story. Lanzo Ball, two other UCLA freshmen, uh, allegedly pickpocket or not pickpocketing, but um, shoplifting yesterday in China. We bring in our basketball insider now, Jeff Goodman, for that. Um, Jeff, first of all, what, what is the latest on that situation in China? Well, the three UCLA freshmen, including Leangelo Ball, the middle Ball brother, uh, were arrested now two days ago in China. They were released. They're at the hotel at this point waiting for the authorities to figure out basically what's going to be done, what the penalty is going to be for shoplifting from Louis Vuitton store that was next door uh, to their hotel. You no, I haven't talked to any of them yet. I know all over here in China, you know, taking care of it, so I'll talk to them when they get back. What are your thoughts? I mean, watching this from afar and hearing about your brother and the shoplifting. I'm just trying to focus on the game. Has it, has it affected you at all? I mean, I know... No, I know my, my people over there handling it, so I'm over here to take care of business. Have you been able to talk to your dad or anything? I haven't talked to any of them. That was Lonzo Ball at shoot-around here in Boston just moments ago, and he's unflappable. At least that's the way it looks. I talked to Luke Walton, and he said, no, Lonzo Ball does not seem affected at all by the recent ongoings with his brother. Hasn't spoken to his brother, as we heard, and is focused on the matchup tonight with Kyrie Irving and the Celtics. All right, Jeff, we're going to talk about that in a second. Just stay right there. We're going to bring in our ESPN legal analyst now, Ryan Smith. And Ryan, uh, this isn't shoplifting in the United States. We've heard three to ten years of prison time for these kinds of charges. What what could they really, in reality, be facing here? Young men actually did. That three to ten years applies to theft by force, coercion, or by other methods. And it's not clear as to whether or not that happened in this case. Also under Chinese law, if you take a relatively high value item, it can be less than three years. This could drop down to sort of an administrative violation, which could be a lot less time or possibly no prison time. So, so much of this depends on information that we just don't know yet. What happened in that store? What did they talk about with authorities? And what do authorities believe happened? But most of all, what do authorities find? If they found evidence, then that tells you what kind of case this might be based on the discussions and, and what maybe the store clerk said as well. We've also heard you could be detained for, for uh, quite a weeks before you find out what's going on in your case. How long do you think it, this could be before the situation is resolved one way or the other? Well, I think you hit the nail right on the head. It could be a while. It could be days, if not weeks. And that depends on the investigation. This is very different from the American system, where things are a lot more transparent, where we have certain requirements, where if somebody isn't charged, you have to release them. But here, there is time for the Chinese authorities to do their investigations and try to figure out what happened and figure out what charges to file. So it could be quite a while. Now, I think there's another important part here. There's so many things at play. There's also politics at play. President Trump there today, does that have an impact? impact on this in some way, not saying he would do something, but saying how would the government respond in that case. And also, I'm assuming the governments are talking to each other as well. So there's so much at play here. I will say this as well, David. When you talk about Lonzo not saying much, I think the same has to apply to LeVar as well. Say nothing, foreign governments want you to respect their legal systems, and I think that's the line they have to toe right now. Until they know more, keep quiet and let the system play out. Again, the three UCLA freshmen, Leangelo Ball, Cody Riley, and Jalen Hill. Uh, Ryan Smith, our legal analyst, giving us uh, his insight into what the situation there is in China. Jeff, let's go back to you. And Well, there is a basketball game going on in, in Boston between the Lakers and the Celtics, these old rivals. What did Lonzo have to say about all that? Yeah, well, while his brother's uh, dealing with his situation in, in China, Lonzo Ball is going to have to deal with Kyrie Irving tonight and a guy that he has never seen before in person. So he's excited, but again, you'd never know it by listening to Lonzo.
in the past I was a fan, you know. Like I said, one of the best point guards in the NBA, but now, you know, we're going to get each other, so now we've got to go out there and, you know, do what I was brought here to do. Yeah, big matchup here tonight. The Lakers 5-5 five and five going against the Celtics, who have won nine straight after starting the season 0-2 without Gordon Hayward. Yep, Lakers-Celtics, looking forward to that with Jeff Goodman, our basketball insider, giving us uh, his thoughts on both fronts, both with the Lakers-Celtics and the situation in China with Leangelo Ball and the UCLA freshman. You are now in California, get back when we left to see it on the floor. Uh, that guy has been better than this year as the entire Rams offense. Last year, L.A. ranked dead last in the NFL in scoring offense. This year, the Rams have the top scoring offense in the league. They're on pace to become the first team in the Super Bowl era to lead the NFL in scoring uh, the year after finishing last. All I'm saying is they're better this year, in short. Way better, Kerry. Um, all right, Keyshawn Johnson joining us now here. Keyshawn, George, and LZ on ESPN 17 here in L.A. Uh, so we want to talk about the Rams. It, 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 Everyone was like, are they great? Are they not great? I'm not really for sure. Um, do you think that Jared Goff is a possible MVP candidate? I said this the other day on our radio show. I think he's starting to play his way into the sort of conversation. Uh -huh. I don't think at the end of the day, because of Carson Wentz, because of Tom Brady, his own teammate and Ty Gurley, but certainly he is putting up the numbers and the team is winning yeah. to make you feel like he deserves to be in that conversation. Now the season's not over with, they got a long season. They haven't hit this tough part of their schedule yet. This game on Sunday against Houston obviously was supposed to be a better game, but Deshaun Watson got hurt. But then they're gonna take Minnesota on in Minnesota, things like that. He's gonna start to see a better type, better teams coming down the stretch. And if he continues on this pace, then he's ha he has to be in the conversation. Okay, well, he has to be in the conversation. I wanna talk about Sean McVay, because I feel like we, I think we give him equal, equal praise, but is it a case of this is just truly an indictment of what a bad coach Jeff Fisher was, especially when it came to offense? Or is Sean McVay really doing something so amazing? I think it came, it's the offense. Okay. Typically, defensive-minded coaches could care less about offense. Okay. I mean, when you think about it, I could go to Coach Dungy, who, who actually was a quarterback mm -hmm. in college. I played on his team. Our defense was phenomenal, but our offense couldn't get it together. You think about Jeff Fisher, you think about Rex Ryan, they all have great defenses, sure. but for whatever reason, their offense just just won't go well. But once Dungy hooked up with Peyton Manning, he didn't have to touch the offense, he just fixed the defense. The Colts went on historical runs okay. and went to playoffs and won championships. And I think Jeff Fisher kept hiring the wrong offensive people to run his offense, inexperienced guys, those sort of things. And look what it got him, it got him on the streets where a young guy like Sean McVay, who has a mind, who's been around offensive-minded coaches, sure. is smart enough to realize I need to s surround myself with a successful defensive coordinator in, in Phillips. He comes in, Wade comes in, gets the job done defensively. Now all I got to do is concentrate on the offensive side of the ball, get things fixed, get some tools. They bring in Robert Woods, they bring in Sammy, they, they uh, figure out how to use Tavon Austin. How could you not realize that Todd Gurley was a weapon out of the backfield in right. the passing game right. when you're Jeff Fisher and the offensive staff? Yeah. I mean, he did it at Georgia. He didn't do it in record-breaking fashion, but he certainly was a weapon in the passing game at Georgia. You drafted him. You should know that. That should be the key. It should be a key. Gurley was on the show uh, two weeks ago, and he's having a conversation. He's saying McVay's like, you're the offense. Like, that's what it, that's simple and plain. Meanwhile, we want to go back to quarterbacks for a minute uh, in the NFL. Uh, we've seen a lot of injuries. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers go down, Carson Palmer, uh, unfortunately, Deshaun Watson. I, and then we're looking at the backups. I wanted to, we were talking about this in the newsroom today, and I'm glad you were on the show. I, I wanted to talk about what's being exposed now in terms of the quarterback play and then the backup options. Backup options are not very good. The quarterback play, I think because when you get to the backups, that's the problem. And a lot of teams have frauds as their starters. Frauds, what do you mean by that? Man, they're not, they backups. Mm -hmm. And they, they were forced to be starters because the teams, the Denver Broncos, they got backups. You're right. John Elway, is, as smart as John is and as great as he's been an executive in this league, he got it wrong after Peyton Manning at the quarterback spot. Simeon had a few good games where you're like, oh, okay, he may be able to do it, but he, he's a backup. I mean, he, he, that's who he is. I mean, when you start to look at these things, you know, I, I, I go back to uh, Coach McCarthy from Green Bay when it was brought up, hey, what about Kaepernick? He said, well, I've been 
I have a guy who's been here with me for almost three years now. Sure. He knows what to do. Well, quite frankly, Brett Huntley doesn't know what to do. Well, hold oh, on. Hold I know on. you sell a guy. <laughs> did you watch him play the other night? Okay, hey, hey. I mean, All right. He's in no, that role you. for a reason. Now, yeah. can he get better? Yeah. Yes. Tom Savage, yeah. Houston. Yeah. You saw that week one. That's uh -huh. why they went to Deshaun. Yeah. So you go back to him now. What is that going to look like on Sunday? The starters that are real starters, their teams are winning. Mm -hmm. The backups, you, know, you say, well, what about Eli Manning, right? Well, that's a whole entire team that has problems, not just Eli. It's an entire team. If he was in Jacksonville with Tom Coughlin, Jacksonville would be even better now. Ah. <sighs> And I'm not saying that's where he's going or anything of like that. Of course. Like that. You're just, just, yeah, you're, you're, just, you're talking about the situation. Yeah, the situation general. as a whole. Um, stick around. We're going to talk some college uh, football with you in just a bit. That's Keyshawn Johnson, our NFL analyst. Back in a moment. The on again, off again suspension of Ezekiel Elliott continues to be a story in Big D. Coming up, we'll tell you why you should expect Elliott to be on the field Sunday in Atlanta. And a lot of great players to choose from, but 